Hey everybody, it's time again for another Christmas movie, the 1954 comedy, Susan Slept Here, with Dick Powell and Debbie Reynolds. Now, screenwriter Mark Christopher, Dick Powell, has been in a bit of a rut ever since he won an Oscar. Now, on Christmas Eve, one cop, who had consulted on one of Mark's movies and his partner, brings 17-year-old juvenile delinquent Susan Landis, Debbie Reynolds, since Mark had previously mentioned to the cop that he had wanted to talk to a juvenile delinquent to help come up with the story. Now leave her there at his apartment with plans to come back the day after Christmas so she doesn't have to spend the holiday in jail. Susan doesn't trust Mark, and he's not exactly thrilled with the idea of having her there either. But after spending part of the night gaining each other's trust, especially after Susan accidentally causes a fight between Mark and his girlfriend, they start to open up to each other. Mark learns about Susan making her mother go on a honeymoon with her new husband when, on a trip that she only agrees to after Susan claimed she wanted to marry a guy she knew and her mother gave her written consent because of her age. But when the police come back quicker than expected, Mark decides to take Susan to Las Vegas to get married so that she would at least have a means of support and not have to go back to jail. Now, after dancing all the night at the clubs, they returned to Mark's apartment, where he immediately left the sleeping Susan and went to go work on a story at a cabin in the mountains. Of course, while he was away, he tries to have his lawyer get Susan to sign some annulment papers. But she is convinced that she has married the right man and then she, that she loves him. The question remains, will, he, will, come to, will Mark come to the same conclusion? Now, personally, I'm of the opinion that this, this movie qualifies as a Christmas film. I'll bet there's room for debate, but close to half the movie does take place like the day before or in the day of. And after all, the cops are trying to offer suits in the delay and being arrested to begin with just due to the holiday spirit. But it's still a fun movie to watch any time of the year, I think. And what a cast. We have Dick Powell as one of the leads who at 50 admittedly looks much older than the 35-year-old character he's supposed to be playing, but he, he plays the character sympathetic, and he never makes any advances on Susan. She makes advances on him. And this ended up being his final movie before he transitioned into TV work. But uh, Alvy, speaking of TV, Alvy Moore is fun as my, Mark's buddy Virgil, who works for Mark. But who, doing what? Who knows, as Susan calls it, to, as a, a phony job. But he's certainly much more lucid here than I'm used to, considering he is best known as the ever-confused and confusing county agent Hank Kimball on classic sitcom Green Acres. And Frances is Mark's fiancée, Isabel Alexander, and she is generally a hoot as the spoiled daughter of a senator who spends most of her screen time furious with Susan, either when she answers Mark's phone or when the two of them meet in person. And, and the comedian Red Skelton gets a quick but <laughs> silent cameo near the end of the movie. But Debbie Reynolds is the heart of this movie as Susan Landis, and it makes it work so well. And right from the moment we meet her, when she is screaming and fighting with the cop as he dra tries to drag her in, and of course he does it in on a way only Debbie Reynolds could do, but we see just how she got into trouble, but at the same time, can easily understand why she will be putting up such a fuss. But as we get to know her along with Mark, it's not hard to feel sympathy for her by the time the cops come back early. And I know I'm cheering for her when she has the police to escort Isabella from the apartment. Especially since the cop who carries her out had just had a picture frame purposely dropped on his feet by Isabella only a few moments before. Now, the dream sequence may be a little odd, but Debbie Reynolds makes up for it. Even though it does have some dancing, I can't quite call it a dream ballet, as it utilizes Dick Powell, Alvy Moore, and Anne Francis, besides Demi, but Debbie is the only one doing anything that really resembles more complicated dancing. The others, not so much. But as a whole, this is just a wonderful movie to watch around Christmas time. Or any other time of the year. While the Warner Archive Collection had previously made this movie available on DVD, 
their Blu-ray release a few years back was a wonderful improvement, really bringing out some of the vivid colors. So that would certainly be the way I would recommend seeing this almost forgotten gem. I know it wouldn't be nowadays because of the story, but it doesn't mean it's not a fun film. The movie is one hour and 38 minutes in length. Well, that's all I have to say on this one, everybody. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope you'll still be back for more soon.